Hi, Sai, Karate Illuminati, this is Noah, and I wanted to continue the discussion we've been having regarding standing joint locks, and specifically get into how you apply joint locks. You see, there are four ways you can apply joint locks in your training, but I find that most martial artists are not aware of that, and will typically only ever apply their joint locks in one or two ways. So first we have restraint. Now, applying a joint lock as a restraint is essentially trying to use uh, pain compliance and the limitation of a joint's mobility to keep a person from moving in some way or another. Uh, this is usually how joint locks are applied in sporting contexts, right? You're applying an arm bar, for example, and you want that person to be immobilized and held by that hyperextended elbow until they give up. The second method is disruption. So in that case, you're trying to force your opponent to move a certain way. So you might apply, for example, uh, a shoulder lock that rotates the shoulder because you want your opponent to counter that and move into another position. That would be disruption, as would applying a standing arm bar to force your opponent to move in a certain direction. Those two are far and away the most popular ways for people to engage in joint lock practice, uh, especially in combat sports. The third method is destruction, and I find that this is one that people may be aware of, but it's something that they never really consider in their training because, honestly, it's really bad for your training partners. Some good examples of this would be um, John Jones applying the uh, shoulder wrench from Naihanchi Sandan, um, full speed, full power, there's no opportunity for a tap out, it's just trying to damage the joint. Uh, or even kicks to the knees trying to dislocate those. And the fourth method of applying joint locks in your training is education. And this is something that you see a lot in traditional martial arts, especially things like Aikido or Motobu Udundi or Hapkido. Um, and essentially it is exploring how the human body can be manipulated and how you can find limitations in its movement. Now, you can apply a joint lock in all four of these ways without really changing the technique itself, right? You can apply an arm bar to try to restrain somebody, try and put them on the ground and keep them still. You can also apply that very same arm bar to force them to move against a wall. That would be disruption. You can apply the very same arm bar too fast for them to move with and pop the joint out of place. That's your destruction. You can also apply that same arm bar in a variety of different directions and different degrees of pressure, different parts of your body applying the arm bar, and that's the educational aspect. Now, all four of these methods have value, but it's important to note that some joint locks do work better with a specific intent in mind. So there are joint locks that wouldn't necessarily work very well as a restraint, but they work great as a destruction. In a certain context, that is going to work better for you. But you have to be aware of those different ways to apply the joint lock and what the limitations are in those situations.